Hey everybody, today I'm Henry Satters. I'm going to show you how to make lap marjoram. Basically, this is a meat pizza that's very popular around the Middle East, especially in Armenia, Turkey, and Lebanon. Let's get straight into it. So, we'll start by adding in one sachet of dry yeast, along with about three tablespoons of white sugar, and two cups of warm water. Now you just want to give that a whisk and mix it all up. Now the sugar activates the yeast, so we don't want to add any salt yet as that will destroy it. So we'll let this sit here for about 5 minutes so the yeast can activate and then we'll continue with the rest. Now the easiest way to do this is in a food processor as we want to create a thick paste. So it's not like you're adding toppings. So using a food processor, I'm going to add in one chopped up brown onion, one tablespoon of sweet paprika, one and a half tablespoons of salt, a couple of cracks of black pepper, one red capsicum. So I'll just chop it up a little bit to make it easy on the food processor. About half a handful of continental parsley two crushed garlic cloves and in my case here I'm using lamb mince you can use beef, beef if you prefer but it's traditional to use lamb now before we add anything else I'm just going to give it a quick mix to get it all combined I'll just scrape the sides. We need a very smooth paste. Now we'll add two tablespoons of tomato paste along with one can of diced tomatoes. Now this is a 400 gram can. Put the lid back on and once again. and you want a nice smooth paste like that. If you want a deeper red colour, all you need to do is add just a bit more tomato paste. But I'm happy with this, as once it bakes, it does just go a bit more red. So we'll set this aside now. And we'll bring our yeast mixture back across. Now we'll add just a pinch of salt in. And we're going to add 4 cups of flour. Straight in. Now if you have a dough mixer you can use that. When doing little batches like this I just like to do it by hand. So all you want to do is sort of create your fingers into like a whisk. And all we're doing is just turning it around. Clockwise and anti-clockwise. And make sure you scrape the sides to get all that flour off. like so. Now obviously we still have a wet dough. What we're going to do is gradually add flour to make it stop sticking. We don't want to add it all at once because then it's going to go too hard. You need to put love into the dough. So all we're going to do is add about a teaspoon, uh, sorry a tablespoon at a time and just work that into the dough. And eventually you should have a nice big dough ball like that. So get the excess dough off your fingers. You don't want to waste it. And you also don't want to create a mess either. We'll set that aside. And sprinkle some flour on your workspace. Bring your dough out. And all we're going to do is work our dough. And we're just going to knead it. Fold it over, knead again. 
and just repeat that process for just a couple of minutes. What this does is activates the gluten and the dough will start to form into something nice, it will aerate. Every time I make dough like this, it makes me appreciate rustic bakers even more because they do this every day early in the morning and you can tell the difference when you buy that bread okay guys so you should eventually have a nice big bowl like that how beautiful does that look now it's a matter of putting it back into our bowl and just cover it with a damp tea cloth and just set that somewhere warm just so you can rise this will usually take about half an hour so after about half an hour your dough should have risen like so to test if it's ready just poke it and as you can see the hole stays that basically indicates it's ready so at this point preheat your oven to about 200 degrees celsius now to bake these i'm going to be using little trays like this I don't, you can use whatever you like, you can use a square dish, a large family size dish, whatever you like. So just bring out your dough, and you want to try and shape it into a log, or a breadstick if you want, and just so we can portion out how many pieces we need. So I'm just going to go straight through the middle once, then I'm going to put this into three pieces, like that. Now take each piece and you want to roll it into a bowl, like so. Now with each of our trays, we need to very lightly grease them. So I'm just going to add a bit of vegetable oil and just rub it around. Make sure you get the sides too. And you want to repeat that process with all your trays. And basically all we need to do is flatten out our balls. Now in my restaurant I have a machine which automatically rolls it out for me. But I'm not going to use that as obviously everybody doesn't have that option available at home. But when I'm doing little stuff like this I just like to use a thin piece of dowel. Not a large rolling pin. So all we need to do is just work it out evenly. Turn it over. And just using a little piece of dowel like this just makes it easier. I've never had any luck in my life using a large rolling pin as it always sticks, folds over, breaks, and so forth. And that's why I just started using this. Now you want to go just a little bit bigger than the actual tray. That way we can form it into it. So obviously that's a bit bigger than this. So put that aside, bring our tray, place your base straight in, and all we're gonna do is just work it into the edge like that. This will also leave us with a nice crust. Just like that, simple. So we'll set that aside. And bring across your next dough ball. Ensure every about two bases you reflour your surface so it doesn't stick. So once you have all your bases ready. All we're going to do is top off our Lachmajun mixture on top. Now you don't want it to be too thick, but of course you don't want it to be too thin either. So you basically want something that looks like that. So 
So at this point your oven should be ready, so we'll go ahead and put these straight in. And place our lap drum straight at the top. So I'm going to do four at a time. If you've got a bigger oven, then go ahead and do as many as you like. Now, a total cooking sh time should be about 15 to 20 minutes. So we want a nice golden brown crust on it. So after about 20 minutes, go ahead and bring them straight out. There we have it. How beautiful do they look? Now, it's a traditional way to eat this. is just get some fresh lemon and squeeze a little bit on. Only squeeze it when you're about to eat it. So I'll just do two. And you want to get it out of the pan and fold it in half like so. And that's it. You eat it straight like that. And simple as that. That's how we make lachmajum. I hope you like that guys, please like and subscribe, if you have any comments or suggestions leave them at the bottom and I'll see you all next time.